guys. Um, so today we are going to be starting um, the um, first lessons in the geometry unit of your math books. Um, we are going to be covering um, one of the two actually lessons today, um, two of the last two lessons. So um, you guys are on the home stretch. You guys have been working really hard um, and we're almost there. Yay! So we are going to be, as I said, covering two lessons today. We're going to be talking about um, properties of shapes and then also um, classifying some shapes. So um, first, we're going to start off on page, whoops, there goes my pen, um, 330. And we're going to be talking about just some general ways that we talk about shapes. So um, on that page, it says, how do shape, how do sides rather and angles help you to name shapes? So um, let's go back to some of the basics that you probably learned in first or second grade. So we know that this shape is called a triangle, but, um, and we know it just by looking at it, but let's think about some of the identifying characteristics. We know that all triangles, whether they look like that, or like that, or like that, or like that, that those are all triangles, right? So they all look really different. All of these shapes look really different, but we know that they are all triangles. And that's because they share certain properties or characteristics that are the same. So think back to our book reports when we talked about character traits. We're now gonna be kind of talking about character traits of shapes and character traits that they have in common. So that is what helps us classify them. So a triangle, for example, is defined by a shape that has three sides and it has three angles where the sides meet. Oftentimes we'll refer to those angles as vertices. So that's the technical term for it is a vertice or a, I'm sorry, a vertex where two sides meet and we and the plural of vertex is vertices. So uh, a triangle has um, three angles. And you hear tri, like in tricycle, um, has three wheels. Um, triangle has three angles. So tri and then the word angle. So we have one, two, three. Oh, I need to get another pen for next time. Three angles. And then we also have one, two, three sides. So no matter what way we we can have long sides, short sides, combinations, we can have all equal sides, but no matter what, all, when we have a three-sided shape, we call it a triangle. Um, let's go ahead and go over some of the general terms that we call um, polygons. So I think, um, I can't remember, I'm getting lost in how many um, math lessons we've done. Poly means many and gone means side. And so um, a polygon is a many sided shape. Um, and so we have specific names kind of based on some of the um, sides of the shape. So as we talked about this shape, we would classify as a triangle. It has three sides and three vertices. Um, we have a four sided, four sided shape is called a quadrilateral, quad meaning four. So a quadrilateral can look um, like any shape that has four sides. We know squares and rectangles have four sides. That's not a very good square. It's a better square, it's passable. Um, we have parallelograms that can be four-sided shape. So any shape that has four sides, we call it a quadrilateral as a general term. We also have specific names like squares and rectangles for shapes that share specific traits. But in general, we talk about um, all four-sided shapes are called quadrilaterals. There's that flare again. Okay. There. There. All right. Um, if we have a five-sided shape, we call it a pentagon. My little um, way of remembering this is uh, a pentagon often looks like a house. 
Um, and if you think of your house in the woods, it's called a tent. So tent, pent, pentagon. Um, pent actually means five, so it's a five-sided shape. Um, we have hexagons, um, which look like, or can look like rather, beehive um, shapes. Um, we have octagons that look like stop signs or can look like stop signs, but hexagons are six-sided figures, so it could be any figure that has six sides to it. Um, octagons, any side that has eight sides to it, octagon, like oct, octopus, eight legs. Um, and um, even dodecahedrons, as you may remember from us reading the Phantom Toll Booth. Um, dodeca, so deca meaning 10, dodeca meaning 12, 12-sided 12 shape. Okay, which I'm not going to draw. <laughs> okay, so we, we can talk about um, classifying shapes in terms of um, sides and angles or sides and vertices. Um, so let's think about some other ways to describe shapes. So some shapes have sides with different lengths. Um, so we talked about that with our triangles. Um, we may have um, a triangle that has all three sides that are a different length. Um, we may have some sides that have um, sides that are the same length. So think about a rectangle. A rectangle has two pairs of sides that are equal. Um, but they're not all equal to each other. There we go. Um, some shapes can have all sides that are the same. Um, shapes can have opposite sides that are the same length. So there's lots of different ways. Um, there's lots of different ways that we can talk about shapes and angles. Um, we uh, let's go ahead and, and briefly go ahead and talk about angles. So I had mentioned with a rectangle. I had talked about classifying it in terms of its sides. We have an equal side here and here. And in math, we will use one line, um, or we'll, we'll use um, lines through the sides to go ahead and show that they're equal. So these two are equal, and then I could also show that these two are equal by doing two um, lines there. So showing that these and these are both the same length. But we can also talk about our quadrilateral, or I'm sorry, our rectangle in terms of angles. So if I'm looking at the angles, I would see that the, the corners, the vertices where the sides meet, create this kind of square. Like I could draw an L and it would create like a little box in all of the corners. So these are called, um, we, we will sometimes say square corners, or we can call the, the um, specific term for these are right angles. So a right angle is anything that creates that nice square corner. Um, uh, so some, some other shapes, um, aside from squares and rectangles, have square corners. Um, so you might have a triangle that has a square corner. Now these other corners would not be square, but it could have one square corner in it. Um, you might have other shapes that have square corners. You might also have shapes that don't have any square corners. So if I were to draw a triangle like this, none of these corners would have a square to them. So oftentimes when we were talking about the, the um, characteristics of shapes, we're talking about um, the corners or angles or vertices or um, the sides. So we're gonna go ahead and skip on over. Um, I'm gonna kind of go through this a little bit fast because I feel like some of this stuff you guys are already familiar with um, and we're gonna save it for the stuff that we maybe aren't as familiar with. So go ahead and turn to page 332. Um, number two says, which of these shapes shown has at least one square corner? So you have two shapes. And so first of all, it's going to be useful to know what to label them. So this one we would call a triangle. This one we would call a rectangle. And so it's asking for which one of these shapes has at least one square corner. Well, we know that a rectangle is going to have all four square corners. 
So that would definitely meet the criteria of at least one square corner. Um, but this triangle also has a square corner in, um, at one side too. So both of them, both the triangle and the rectangle, would actually meet the criteria of at least one square corner. Question three says, which of the shapes shown has all square corners? Well, we know that that would be the rectangle. It has all the square corners, whereas the triangle, as we talked about, wouldn't have square corners in the other two corners. Um, number four says, which of the shapes shown has some sides that are the same length? So we know that rectangles are made up of two sides of equal length. So we have two long sides and two shorter sides that are equal length. Um, but our triangle, um, oh, has some sides that are the same um, length. So in this one, it actually looks like our triangle, let's see if I can redraw it. In this one, it looks like our triangle actually has two equal sides and then one side that is not equal. So both the rectangle and the triangle would actually be ones that would have at least some sides that are the same length. And which of the shapes shown, this is number five, which of the shapes shown has opposite sides that are the same length? And that would clearly be the rectangle because there aren't really opposite sides on our triangle. Okay, um, uh, below it says you can name shapes that belong to a group. You can also name shapes that don't belong to a group. So use the two blue shapes to answer problems six through eight. So we have two shapes. One is a rhombus. A rhombus is classified by having all equal sides, just like a square, but it doesn't have the same square corners as a square. So we have some larger corners and some smaller corners, but they don't make that nice L-shaped square. So a rhombus is similar to a square and then it has all the sides that are equal, but it doesn't have all the angles as 90 degree or right angles. Um, the other one is a really cool looking triangle that looks like this. So um, number six says, which of all the shapes shown belongs to the group? All sides are the same length. Rhombus would have all sides the same length. Which of these shapes shown does not belong to this group? triangle would not belong to the group because it has sides that are not the same length. This side is clearly longer than these other two sides. These other two sides may or may not be the same length. In your book, it looks like they're not the same length, but they could be. But because not all of them are the same length, they wouldn't be in the same category as the rhombus. Number seven says, which of the shapes shown belongs to the group? All sides are different lengths. Well, in this case, it would be our triangle. We have one, two, three different sized shape. Um, which of the shapes shown does not belong to this group? So the rhombus, because the rhombus has all equal sides. Um, number eight says, name a different group that both the triangle and the rhombus belong to. So for example, you could say that both of them belong to the group, no square corners, because neither of them have any square corners. Okay, um, we're going to actually go ahead and skip on over to um, uh, we're going to skip numbers 9 and 10. Um, they're talking about looking at um, the similarities and differences between the triangles on the previous page. Um, I would highly recommend working through those problems on your own, um, but in terms of time for this video, I'm going to go ahead and, and keep moving um, because really what I want us to work on is we've, we've worked before with this kind of diagram, which is called a Venn diagram, showing differences as well as similarities of um, things. But this time we're going to be using it with properties of shapes. So, for example, if we were, um, if you'll look on page 333, they have on one side um, some square corners. So I'm just going to say square corners. Now, I'm going to be more specific and say some square corners. And then on the other side, it would say some sides, same length. And I'm just going to write the sign equal because we know that equal means the same. So we have some square corners and some equal sides. 
And then in the middle, we would have shapes that would have both square corners and equal sides. So for example, on the square corners, we might have a triangle, whoops, <laughs> triangle that looks like this. And on the same sides, we might have our rhombus. That one's looking kind of like it has square corners. There we go. But in the middle, we would have a square because it has both characteristics of same equal sides as well as square corners. So there's different ways that you can visually represent talking about the um, characteristics that, group, that um, shapes share and also the characteristics that they may differ on. So a Venn diagram could be one way of doing that. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next part of this lesson, or I'm sorry, then we're going to move on to the next lesson rather, um, which is lesson 31. And now we're going to be talking just specifically about quadrilaterals and different types of quadrilaterals and how we can classify them. So go ahead and turn to page 336 to start this lesson. And on 336 in the yellow box, it says a rhombus is one kind of quadrilateral and a rectangle is another kind of quadrilateral. How are a rhombus and a rectangle the same and how are they different? So we're going to go ahead and go through the questions to answer some of these things. But first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and draw. I'm going to pretend like my rhombus has all the same lengths of sides. And a rectangle. So that is one thing that we know about rhombuses is that all the sides are the same length. With rectangles we know that we have some sides that are the same length. With rectangles we also know that we have square corners and with rhombuses we know that we do not have square corners. So those are just a few of the things that are the same and a few of the things that are different. Both of them belong to the category of quadrilaterals because both of them have four sides. So that's something that they both have in common. So A says, which of the two shapes has four sides and four angles? Both the rhombus and the rectangle. They both have four sides and four angles. They're both quadrilaterals. B says, which of the two shapes has two pair of sides that are the same length? Both of them do. We have all four sides are the same length on the rhombus. So we could say that we have one, two, three, four pairs that are the same. And then on our rectangle, we have one, two, three, four pairs that are the same. Um, which of the two shapes has four sides that are the same length? That would just be the rhombus. The rhombus is the only one that has all four sides that are the same shape, the same length. Um, D says, which of the two shapes has four square corners? We know that would be the rectangle. The rhombus does not have square corners. Now E says, how are the rhombus and the rectangle shown above alike? And how are they different? So what we would say is we would look back to the questions that we answered. Well, both have four sides and four angles. So both the rectangle and the rhombus are quadrilaterals. They both have sides that are equal, of equal length. The rhombus has four sides that are all the same length. The rectangle has two pairs of two sides that are the same length. The rhombus would too, but if we're going, but the rhombus it differs slightly in that all sides are the same length. The rectangle has four square corners and the rhombus does not. So those are just a few things that are the same and then also a few things that they differ on. Um, on the next page, on page 337, it says a quadrilateral is any shape with four sides and four angles. I'm going to skip down to the first bullet point that says a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if it has two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of sides that are the same length. So sides that are parallel, sides are parallel rather if they are always the same distance apart. So for example, our rhombus, I'm going to use a different color pen. If we were to extend these lines and go on forever and ever and ever and ever, these lines would never meet. So lines that never meet are lines that we call parallel. So a parallelogram would be any shape that has um, two pairs of parallel sides. So we have two going this way, and we also have two going this way, which you can't see because this pen is dead. 
So, two going this way and two going the opposite way. A rectangle would also be considered a parallelogram. It has two pairs of lines that if we continue them, they will never meet. So both the rectangle and the rhombus would be considered parallelograms. If we had a shape such as a trapezoid, that would not be considered a parallelogram. A trapezoid has one pair of parallel lines, but if we were to continue this other pair of lines, we would see that eventually they would meet. Therefore, it would not be two pairs of parallel lines. It would be only one pair of parallel lines, not making it a parallelogram. Um, a quadrilateral is a rectangle if it has four square corners. A rectangle also has two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of sides that are the same length. So notice, that they have a picture of a square. So a square can be, consider, can be considered a type of rectangle based on the characteristics. So remember the characteristics of a rectangle is that it has at least two pairs of equal sides, which we do because all sides are the same. It has two pairs of parallel lines that will never meet if we continue them out. And it has four square corners. So those are all the requirements that are needed to make up a rectangle. And we see that a square would also fit into the category of a rectangle. However, if we had, let's use our trapezoid again. Our trapezoid would not fit the characteristics because again, we only have one set of parallel lines. The other pair of lines meet. We have maybe one set of equal side of, um, uh, equal sides, but we have the other that does not have equal sides, and we don't have any square corners. So a trapezoid would be an example of what wouldn't be considered a rectangle. A quadrilateral is a rhombus if it has two pairs of parallel sides and four sides that are all the same length. So again, a square would fit in that category. It has all sides the same length, and it has two pairs of parallel sides. Um, a rhombus, however, would not be a square because a square needs to have all sides of equal length and those four corners. All right, number one says a square is a quadrilateral. Explain what a square is by writing about its sides and corners. So if we were to describe just a square, we would say, let's talk about sides. In a square, we have all sides are the same length. Let's talk about angles. We have four square corners, or we could say all corners are square. And let's talk about lines. If we were to extend our sides, we would have two sets of parallel lines or parallel sides. So, um, so we would want three components to our square, four corners that are square, two pairs of parallel sides, and four sides that are the same length. Okay, um, let's go ahead and turn the page. So on the next page it says, is a square a rectangle? Is a rectangle a square? So beneath that it says, picture it. You can use a drawing to compare quadrilaterals. All quadrilaterals have four sides and four angles. A square has four square corners, as does a rectangle. A square has two pairs of parallel sides, as does a rectangle. A square has four sides that are all the same length, whereas a rectangle has two pairs of sides that are the same length. So down below it says you can use a table to compare quadri quadrilaterals as well. So four sides, four angles, check. Both of them check out on that. Four square corners, check. Both of them have that. Two pairs of parallel sides, check, both of them have that. Two pairs of sides that are the same length, check, both of them have that. Four sides are the, that are the same length is the one area that they differ in. A square always has four sides that are the same length. A rectangle can have four sides that are the same length, but it also cannot. So again, a square could be considered a rectangle because it meets all of the criteria for a rectangle. 
but a rectangle could not be a square because it does not always have four sides that are the same length. So on the next page, it says, what is an attribute of a square that is not the, an attribute of every rectangle? So again, it's that last category, four sides that are the same length. Number three says, does every rectangle have all the attributes of a square? Nope, because of those four equal sides. It does not always have four equal sides, therefore it could not be considered a square. Four says, does every square have the attributes of a rectangle? Yes, because it only needs two pairs of sides that are the same length and a square would have that. So five says, is every square a rectangle? Explain why or why not. I'd like you to go ahead and answer that in your own words. And six says, is every rectangle a square? Explain why or why not. Same thing, please go ahead and answer in your own words. Um, number seven and eight, number seven says circle all the quadrilaterals below that are squares. That's an identification um, problem and you guys can go ahead and do that. And eight says circle all the quadrilaterals below that are rectangles. Remember with that one that squares would meet the criteria of a rectangle. So if you see a square, you would want to consider it a rectangle. That's my hint. Okay, turn it moving on page 340. Um, it's a, the question says, I have a quadrilateral. It has four sides that are all the same length. It does not have any square corners. What is the name of my shape? So if we think back, we know that a, there are two shapes, two quadrilaterals that we know of that have the same, have e four equal sides. So we know that we have a square that has all four equal sides. And we know that we have a rhombus that has all four equal sides. Now the other part of this says it does not have any square corners. Our square has square corners, our rhombus does not. So our shape would be a rhombus. So they're asking you to do some detective work here. So beneath, they say model it. You can make a model to help you name the quadrilateral. So thinking about making equal sides, but no square corners. Um, it says solve it. You can also make a list of the attributes to help you name a, a quadrilateral. So I kind of did a combination of the two in that I drew models, but I also thought of the list of attributes. So going through as kind of a checklist, the square has square corners, so it would not fit the, the requirements. However, a rhombus, um, does have four equal sides, but it um, does not have any square corners. So our shape would be a rhombus. On the next page, it says now you will solve a problem like the one on the previous page. Name the shape below. So you have a shape that looks kind of like the Star Trek symbol. Kind of. And that it looks like this. So whenever you name a shape, the first thing you want to do is start by counting sides and angles. So we have one, two, three, four sides. So this shape, although it doesn't look like a square or rectangle, this shape would actually be a quadrilateral because it has four sides. So nine says write the number of sides and angles the shape has. It has four sides. How many angles does it have? There's one, two, three, and this one would be considered four because even though it, uh, we usually think of corners as being this area here, on this one, it's still showing where two sides meet. So these are our two sides, our angle would be right here. So how many sides? Four. How many angles? Four as well. 10 says, does the shape have any parallel sides? We were to draw our lines out. Nope, those aren't parallel. And we can see that these two wouldn't be parallel because they meet as well. So no, there are no parallel sides. Does the shape have any square corners? No, definitely not. No square corners for any of the corners. Does the shape have two pairs of sides that are the same length? Yes, these two would be the same length. And these two would also be the same length. Is the shape a quadrilateral? Explain why or why not. Yes, it is a quadrilateral. Why? Because it has four sides and four angles. Any shape with four sides and four angles would be a quadrilateral. 
Is the shape a parallelogram or a rectangle or a square? No, it is not any of those. But it says explain, and I would like you to think of back on the other questions that we asked. Does it have parallel sides? Does it have square corners? Does it have two pairs of sides that are the same length? Think about what the requirements are for all three of those, parallelogram, rectangle, and square, and I would like you to explain why it does not meet any of the criteria for those three shapes. Okay, the last two questions we have, numbers 15 and 16, um, those are also identification. So 15 says circle all the quadrilaterals below that have two pairs of sides the same length but are not rectangles. And 16 says draw, draw a quadrilateral that has at least one square corner but is not a rectangle. So, um, so I would like you, to, uh, you guys to go ahead and complete those on your own. Um, I will be attaching the um, uh, practice book pages to the assignment. And um, we are nearing the end, friends. So um, I think there's one more lesson to go after this. And I hope you all have a great week. Okay, bye.